your uh, event going so far today? Everybody good? Nice. Uh, I'm Mark. Um, I've seen some familiar faces. Uh, you may have known me before. I worked at a company in Seattle called Microsoft, leading blockchain efforts for them. Uh, six months ago, I reached out to Joe Lubin and said, Joe, I haven't been to church in a while, but uh, I haven't lost religion. I need to come back. Um, and so I've been working with Consensus the last couple months. Uh, and today we're going to talk about a whole bunch of new stuff. And so it's going to be largely demo heavy. We're going to talk about some new tools. There'll be a new uh, VS Code extension for Travel Suite. So we'll talk about that, how you can, and we've got integrated debugging and all that other goodness. Um, we're going to talk about some connectors that are going to help you connect to a bunch of stuff and build things out really, really quickly. And also expand the number of people who can develop, which is kind of fun. Um, and then we'll show some integration that we've got with uh, WebGL, with Ethereum that plugs into Unity. And so you can now have MetaMask and games running with connectivity there too. So without any further ado, we'll go ahead and dig in. So first up is Truffle Suite for VS Code. Um, so this is VS Code integration for Truffle Suite. Um, you're going to get all the goodness that's represented here. Uh, it works with Infura, Quorum, and uh, Quorum Blockchain Service, which is a new service we have at Consensus. So no matter whether you're going public or private, you're going to be able to uh, connect it pretty easily. You get file new project creation. You start with a truffle box, some canned scenarios, where you can do a net new project. You can sign in and out of Infura, which is quite nice, as well as navigate all the different networks you have set up. Um, you can, uh, we've got integration with Open Zeppelin, so you can sort of download the contracts from Open Zeppelin as well. Uh, syntax checking, linting, compilation, um, all sorts of goodness there. And you can also do forked chains. Now, um, if we have time, we also have uh, dashboard integration working. So I know a lot of people had asked about, hey, um, can, can we move some of the, the creds out of that environment file? And can we use MetaMask? And so we have that. Um, the team got in at the very last minute, so we may look at that as well. And we're definitely going to look at some interactive debugging. So because we've only got 20 minutes, I already have it opened up. You can see here that, um, so let's go to the command palette. We'll start off there. So if you're not familiar with this, this is um, Visual Studio Code. This is an extension we have in here. It's also using the Lucidity extension from Juan Blanco, who's also at Consensus. Um, and you're going to go to View Command Palette. If I type Truffle, hang on one second. Uh, yeah, let me take a look at that. Uh, do, 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 do. Actually, you know what? I've not had to change this on stage before, so I'm not sure on how to do that. Um, but let me just zoom in on a couple pieces of this. Let's go to view, command palette. I'll read them off. So you've got debug transactions, new Solidity project. You can start and stop the Ganache server. Ganache, if you're not familiar with that, that's a local... Um, EBM you can do and deploy to and do all sorts of goodness there. You can also create new networks. Uh, I like to create um, networks that are today for Ganache as well as Infura. If you look down here, you've got Infura and Ganache networks that are set up. If you look here, I can see all the test networks as well. Uh, now what I can do is I can see I've got a project structure that's set up. I can right click on my contract. This is just a simple one that we opened called Simple Marketplace that I've opened from a truffle box. I can go ahead and build my contracts. You can see down here in the bottom of the screen, it's now doing building. Then I'm going to go ahead, once this is done, I'll be able to go ahead and deploy those. And I can deploy those to whatever networks I have configured, so it's pretty easy to go do. All right, while waiting for the build to complete, I'll just show you also here we've got, you know, add contracts from Open Zeppelin, which will bring those all in. And if I want to go ahead and deploy contracts, I can do that. I can pick development, which is my Ganache 7 instance. I can go to dashboard, which I talked about earlier, and I can go to any of the test networks that set up. So I'm going to go ahead and click development. And by the way, I can come down here to outputs. You can see here I've got Truffle Suite for VS Code. I can see everything that's going on behind the scenes. Okay, you can see it's gone ahead and deployed. I can see all the goodness. There. Now, one of the things we have with this truffle box, I'm going to go over here to terminal. As you can see here in scripts, we have an offer.js. And so, with this contract, it's called Simple Marketplace. So, it's think of it, I want to go ahead and put something up for sale. I want to bid on that. So, it's a lightweight marketplace contract that's there. What I'm going to do now is just go ahead and um, call truffle execute.
and I'll do scripts, whack, offer.js. And so what this is going to do is it's going to use a different account than the one I just created on, because we've got logic in here, because if you're a seller, you can't bid on your own project. That'd be a bad thing. And it's going to go ahead and deploy using one of the scripts we've got set up here. Go ahead and execute a contract. You can see here that it was successful. It said offer good luck. All right, so why do we go do that? Because what we want to do now is go to our command palette and debug a transaction. And now you can see all the transactions that were executed. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. You can see here, this is the simple marketplace contract we just, just called. Give that a second. And over here, you can see variables. You've got watching. You can do a call stack. And what we just did is we um, went ahead and uh, made an offer there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and look at the um, offer price. Scroll down here. I'm just going to go ahead and step through this, but now I've got interactive debugging for my Solidity smart contracts. And we're going to go ahead and switch it there. And uh, of course, it happened off screen. You can see now that the, that one went, went ahead and updated. So now you're getting the debugging experience that you want directly within here. Um, we're doing some additional work to this right now, but the team wanted to get that in here so you guys could see it. Um, this will be shipping in the next few weeks. This hasn't launched yet. It hasn't launched yet. It hasn't launched yet. We're getting the. Uh, the debugger in. Uh, we were going to release it without the debugger, and then the feedback we had from some of the testers was like, yeah, if we'd rather wait a couple weeks to have the debugger actually baked in. So we'll have this released in the next couple weeks. This is awesome. Cool. Yeah. Sorry, I can't see with those lights like right in my face. What was that? Can you explore global variables at that point? Like just like I, I believe you can, yes. So we've got that, um, and then we can also, if we wanted to, we're not going to go into a lot of detail in this one. Let's go ahead and stop. And then to, we'll come back for the dashboard deployment in just a minute. All right, so um, that will help you go faster with your contracts. So let's talk about connectors. So. A lot of times when I talk to folks like, hey, I want to build something really quickly. It's like, all right, well, what is it you want to go build? Well, when this happens on chain, I want to send a text message. Or, hey, um, I'd like to send an NFT when Adobe Creative Cloud gets a new file that's posted up there. Can I do that automatically? I'd love to be able to, um, when this happens in a database, can I go ahead and have this happen on chain? So put data in there. Or if something happens on chain, I want to have that go into a database. And then I've got some customers who are like, hey, like, we're all bought in. But for right now, we get a file that's an Excel file as an attachment on an email, and that has to get into the chain. And so with connectors, you can actually say, hey, it's basically if this, then that, to connect to over 400 different types of things. And so conceptually, there's this notion of a trigger where there's business logic that when an event occurs on a contract, you can say, all right, when this happens there, we can react to that. Um, and then you can have actions that say, hey, I want to query the state, I want to execute the functions, and I want to deploy contracts. And so if this happens on chain, do something, which could also tri trigger stuff that happens on chain. Uh, it could also do uh, in the opposite direction, off chain and on chain. So we'll show you a couple examples here today. This is a new connector that we're going to be releasing. It will start initially in Microsoft's Power Platform and Logic Apps. There's a reason for that because it has a pretty pretty big blast area, blast radius, um, and then we'll bring it to other platforms. And so when we say it's going to be in Logic Apps and Power Platform, what does that actually translate to? Well, if you want to have it interact with, say, um, Pro code developers, they're going to have tools they can use and plug this into. If you want to have it for low code developers and power ups, we're going to show you like how you can quickly make a chat bot with this that plugs into Slack and other things in just a minute. Um, it also allows you to get into some business applications. It also plugs into Amazon, even though it's a Microsoft service. It also plugs into Slack and, and um, a number of other Stripe and a bunch of other services there. Um, so this is a connector that we'll be releasing shortly. Uh, we're going to demo it here today. We figured if you guys came out on a Sunday, Saturday and a Sunday that you were pretty hardcore, and we should get you some visibility there. Um, but the big thing here is it's got 400 connectors, and some, some of those are connectors, and one we demo today is from folks like Twilio. So we can do SMS messages as a result. We can also do voice interaction. So I've done demos of this where something happens on chain, it's a trigger, it'll call you, it will ask you a question, you'll press one or two, and then it will go ahead and send some, some things back on chain. So it's going to allow you to do a lot more things a lot more quickly. 
right? And so even if you say, you know, I want to write all the code myself, this will help you prototype those scenarios out to prove it out. Uh, for folks looking for investors, maybe get show, show the investors the art of the possible. It really will connect to a number of different things that are there. So let's go ahead and pop out into a demo. All right, so we got a bunch of these demos here, okay? So this one I just had trigger manually. So there's a bunch of triggers you can have. I just said, because uh, I could kick this off by myself. I can basically query a smart contract. I can go ahead and execute a smart contract. Now, <coughs> what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to have a, I also use Twilio here. And so Twilio, I'm saying, hey, call, a, go ahead and send me a text message. You'll, you'll uh, hear my phone go off in a second. Um, and then also send me an email, which you'll see happen on screen. And it also will do things like, because the connector provides information like on the transaction hash, you can have things like that like automatically populate in here. So you can build things out in like four or five minutes, uh, in some cases just to get things going, get things to, to try out. So if I go ahead and execute this right now. So this is an interactive debugger for this particular tool, right? So it's gone out to this smart contract address. It's gone ahead and executed a function on a smart contract. And it's gone ahead and sent an email out and I've got a text message on my phone just a second ago. This took me just a few minutes to build before, before the session today. So that's kind of interesting, right? Um, let's go ahead and look at this, and so this is another scenario when I said, hey, what would it take if you wanted to issue an NFT from just creating a new file in Adobe Creative Cloud? Well, there's an Adobe Creative Cloud connector, right? And so you can do this when, um, and I'll show you an example, so I was basically uploading, there's a thing, if you, I'm a big Rick and Morty fan, and so they have like a Rickify me, or go Rick yourself uh, thing, where I've got like a profile picture of myself. Um, and so I can actually upload, and so I actually did this this morning. So on my phone, I can go ahead and go to the Adobe Creative Cloud app. I can upload a photo. It will detect that it just came in. It will then process this logic, and then it sends me a text message after the fact. So, uh, and the thing is, we're wiring it up right now with the Infura IPFS API as well. And so you have full IPFS and be able to do things on chain uh, as well. So again, this took like 15 minutes. It's like, we're gonna be able to build this stuff out really quickly. Now that's interesting, but what if you wanna build out something where, hey, I've got an idea, I wanna pitch this really quickly. Well, Power Platform is another place where I said these connectors sort of pop up. And so Power Platform has um, low-code, no-code data, so it's really easy to spin up like backend data, but it also has low-code, no-code apps. And what that means is you can build a WYSIWYG app that will target mobile, web, desktop, like in minutes. They also now integrate with Teams. Um, and then it also has these notions of chatbots, right? And so we've actually built a chatbot out here. So remember that smart contract I showed you at the beginning? which was the simple marketplace. Here, I built out what's called a topic. A topic is just like how we're gonna interact with the user. And then at this point, you know, I'm asking the user what's the item name and what's the price. And, then I, and it says, okay, I wanna go ahead and do a, um, an action. Go ahead and look at the action. And so basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna pass in the item and the price it's gonna go ahead and deploy a smart contract. We're, we're buttoning this up right now. The, the, you put the contract API in here, which in this case is fairly long, as you can see. Um, but those are all gonna be one line, so we're gonna pass them in as variables, or line them to variables in the, in the release. And then it's gonna go ahead and respond back. And so I can build a chat bot that will interact with folks. But then I also have the ability, if I wanna publish that, I can publish it out to Facebook, I can publish it out to Microsoft Teams, I can publish it out to Slack, I can publish it out to Skype. Uh, I don't think people use Cortana anymore, but like, and then you publish on your website too, right? So you really have a lot of options where you can start building really interesting types of, of, of apps that interact with your systems pretty darn quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. So we looked at that. Um, the next thing we'll talk about, let's pop back to the slides, is there's another type of integration that we, talk, we can talk about. which is those last two things I talked to you about, they're gonna to come together. So 
we have a lot of people that said, hey, I'd like to be able to generate web services for my smart contracts, right? Like, I want to be able to have people write apps because a lot of people that I want to hire, like everyone in this room probably knows hiring is incredibly tough right now. And you had a lot of people that want to participate that don't know a lot about blockchain. <coughs> they're front-end developers who want to connect up to web services and things like that. Or they're data developers who want to connect to data. And so you can see here, this is coming in an upcoming release. We've got it in test right now where I can right-click on a smart contract and it will generate smart, it will generate web services for every single function of my contract. And so, uh, and by the way, those will publish in um, Azure Functions, or if you're familiar with, with the AWS, that's the equivalent of like Lambda, or the two things I just showed you. And you just basically need to take those and run with it. If you want to publish to reports, <coughs> same thing. It'll go into a streaming data set you can see online. Uh, and similarly with data. If you want, it'll generate a schema for a database, and then you allow it to automatically publish to a database. So you'll be able to right-click and deploy, and now it's hooked up to your chain and just works. But, oh, hang on a second. There's one more thing. I want to make sure we leave some time for questions. But, do, do, do. Let me reload this page. So Juan Blanco from Ethereum uh, is back at Consensus. He works on my team. And I said, Juan, I'm a Unity guy, and I built a bunch of games over the holidays. I want to see if we can update in Ethereum to do more with Unity, because Unity is based on .NET, and that's what Ethereum is. And so Juan has shipped this. You can download this today. If you're doing hackathons, this is kind of fun. Excuse me. Um, and so now you've got Unity, which can publish games, publish them as Web. Thank you. Can publish them as WebGL, so they can run inside the browser. You could also put them in places like IPFS uh, and um, run it here. This is pretty basic, but we have a whole bunch of different samples we're working on. Um, some, you know, hard, more uh, hardcore games, and then we have some that are more in the vein of. Um, Open here. Here we go. Also, some casual game scenarios. Yeah, so this is kind of a fun one we got going right now. So you can't hear the audio right now, but a couple different examples. And so this is another thing. If you think, hey, how how would I want to issue NFTs to people? And some sometimes there's there's four or five different uh, scenarios that we were looking at. Here's one that's just kind of fun. Uh, when I was a kid, you could put a quarter in a machine, showing my age, but probably the hair does that. Um, you put a quarter in a machine, you turn a knob, and you get these little things that pop out, and you get a prize inside. So you could actually have like NFTs being issued this way as well. These can all come out back to all the services we have back at, at Consensus uh, as well. So we just covered a lot of ground <laughs> in a very short period of time. Um, I think we have a couple minutes left for questions, but I do want to see if you folks have questions, and also, what can we build for you? Like, what can we help with? You? 